Alright, again, this time with feeling. Uh, due to the fact that I've got four pissing hours of wrestling to review, uh, I'm going to be skipping the play-by-play -play commentary and just kind of going match by match and letting you know the flow. Now, with that being said, let's get into this real quick. Beginning with... Tonight, on 205 Live, Brian Kendrick faces down his former friend, Jack Gallagher. Grand Metalik brings a jobber down low. And for the main event, the premier athlete, Tony Nese, competes with the heart of 205 Live, Mustafa Ali. Who wins? Who loses? Let's find out. All right, we begin with match one. Brian Kendrick versus Jack Gallagher. Uh, Kendrick and Gallagher had a hard hitting fight uh, w with Drew Gulak participating on commentary in pretty entertaining fashion, berating Percy Watson. Uh, I think it was Percy that he was insulting. Uh, uh, throughout the match, uh, Kendrick and Gallagher seemed evenly matched with Kendrick having the edge. Uh, when it looks like Kendrick was going to beat Gallagher, Drew Gulak runs off from the commentary team to go and try and interfere. This, however, proves meaningless as Akira Tozawa runs up and brings down Drew Gulak, allowing Kendrick to get the win. Um, and yeah, so I guess Kendrick and Tozawa are now kind of a pair. We'll see how this turns out. Uh, I don't know if Kendrick being a face is a good idea. We'll see. Uh, for the second match, we had Grand Metalik in a squash match. He beat up a jobber, and as soon as he beat up the jobber, uh, TJ and Lucha House Party came out to celebrate. TJP hops into the ring, uh, rips the mask off of Grand Metalik, and then runs off with it. TJP, most likely, is not welcome back in Mexico. Or, welcome to Mexico, not welcome back to Mexico. He's not Mexican, he's Filipino. <laughs> uh, match numbers. Oh yeah, we did have a backstage interview with the Canalysis, as TJP is trying to hide and get away from the Lucha House Party, finds none other than Maria and Mike Canellis, and approaches Mike Canellis, needing some backup because he got himself too deep in trouble with the Lucha House Party. Uh, but yeah, for the main event, we had Mustafa Ali versus Tony Nese. Uh, Ali was coming out injured uh, only due to the fact that the Falls Count Everywhere match that he had with Hideo Itami. Uh, this impacted his abilities. And this was a longer match than I was anticipating. Uh, but each major hit told a story. Every time he landed a big move, it hurt Mustafa Ali more and more and more and more and more, which brought Mustafa towards the inevitable end of the match. He won. He beat Tony Nese. Uh, after a tremendous struggle and one tricky looking bridge pin. Uh, after the match was over, Nice went to go after Mustafa Ali, only to be stopped by Cedric Alexander. After Cedric had saved his buddy Mustafa Ali, Buddy Murphy's theme hits, he steps out onto the stage and then just stares down the both of them after ripping out his hairband aggressively. Uh, all in all for 205 Live, I think I'm going to go ahead and give that one... Just because the main event was terrific. It was a great match. I'm going to go ahead and give 205 Live an A-. minus. The main event told a great story, the first match told a great story, and the second match was neither here nor there. Uh, but yeah, that was 205 Live, and if you agree with me or if you disagree, uh, there's a poll right here. You can leave your vote and let me know what you think. Tonight on NXT, we have a May Young Classic competitor taking on Nikki Cross. The Street Profits seek vengeance upon the mighty. Matt Riddle makes his debut. And Birch and Lorcan take on a new aspiring tag team who probably won't last the night. Who wins? Who loses? Let's get into the nitty gritty. 
Uh, we start off with our first match. It was Nikki Cross versus Mercedes Martinez. It's an interesting matchup. I haven't seen Mercedes Martinez in action. Gotta say, it was impressive watching her go up against Nikki Cross. But Nikki's pure insanity just keeps her from either submitting or losing. Uh, she even keeping her from tapping from a very terrific looking gu uh, guillotine. Uh, Martinez seems to be quite the technical wrestler with a lot of power to boot, but she loses to Nikki Cross, of whom ends the match with The Purge. Uh, after the match, Martinez and Nikki have a bit of a stare down with Nikki mouthing, That was fun! Uh, and Martinez nodding in response. Uh, Candice LeRae tries to confront Nikki Cross after the match by heading up to the ring. Nikki Cross just laughs it off, drops to the floor, rolls out of the ring, and tries to leave, only to be stopped by Aleister Black. Uh, Aleister Black simply moves past Nikki Cross, however, stares down Candice LeRae, stating, Where is Johnny? And telling her that his future is over. Uh, after that, we had match number two. It was the Mighty versus the Street Profits. The Street Profits performed magnificently with Montez Ford using some amazing athletics. However, the Mighty hit some great spine busters and a falcon arrow. Uh, Montez Ford carried the match for the, uh, the Street Profits side for most of that. Uh, finally tagging in Dawkins to soften them up. Ford gets tagged in after a near fall and hits that ludicrous frog splash that he does. Uh, let's see here. Regal talks to a furious Aleister Black in a backstage segment, letting him hit, letting him know that he has a match with Gargano at TakeOver War Games. End of the line. <laughs> uh, yeah. After that, we had match number three, which was Matt Riddle versus Luke. My last name is not a size of underwear, Menzies. Uh... It was a great showcase of Riddle's abilities. His theme music is trash, uh, with Luke Menzies not being able to... Uh, I mean, Luke Menzies, he was not a slouch in any means during this match. But Matt Riddle won with his bro mission hold. And then uh, match four was Birch and Lorcan versus Mendoza and uh, Umberto Carrillo. Uh, starting off with Birch and Umberto Carrillo, Umberto was pretty impressive during this match. But we all know where this was going. Uh, Lorcan pins uh, Raul Mendoza after some dual offense with Birch. And then, uh, ending the show, we got a promo with the Undisputed Era, promptly interrupted by the War Raiders, throwing Adam Cole into the side of a semi-truck. Bobby Fish was thrown into some tables. Just as the four began to get some ground, Ricochet showed up uh, to help. Yeah, everyone eventually got dragged down to the ring, and again, just as the Undisputed Era were looking to get the upper hand, Pete Dunne intervenes and starts fighting them as well. Uh, this infuriated William Regal, who decided... War Games. You're all in War Games now. Uh, which is actually the most appropriate use of the War Raiders. But yeah, that was NXT. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this one... I'd say I give NXT... a B. It was good. It was really good. This wasn't terrific. Uh, and the polls are up here. And then I will be right back with some NXT UK reviews. And now. Tonight on NXT UK, we had Trent Seven vs. Saxton Huxley. The Kofi Brothers had a bit of a promo. Mark Coffey vs. Ah! Uh, we had Danny Birch versus Sam Gradwell. Noam Dar versus Zach Gibson. Mustache Mountain took on a tag. Or in the second pissing episode of the week, Mustache Mountain took on Sam Gradwell and Saxon Huxley. Uh, after that, Isla Dawn took on Nina Samuels. Jordan Devlin took on Tucker. And. What should be the main event is Travis Banks versus Wolfgang. Oh. Anyway, who wins? Who loses? Let's get into it. 
All right, so we begin with the first episode of NXT UK tonight, which was weird. I don't know why they did a double special. Uh, but yeah, we had Trent Seven versus Saxon Huxley. Trent was overpowered for most of the match. Uh, crowd chanting, I think it was, uh, it's like, what was it? Wildcat Jesus or something like that? Uh, to Huxley. Uh, Trent ends it in under 10 minutes with the burning hammer. Uh, this was a good match. For I had watched this a few hours ago because I managed to actually watch it while I was at work and took some brief notes on this. Uh, it's a bit of it was a bit of a hectic day. In the interim, uh, we had a uh, Coffee Bros vignette. Uh, match number two, it was Mark Coffee versus Flash. Huh. Uh, after a few initial punches, Flash gets a series of strikes and arm drags. Uh, Joe distracted Flash, giving Mark an opportunity to strike with a brutal uppercut. Coffee with an impressive suplex into a bridge pin, uh, which didn't work. After serious offense, Flash managed to get the win after rolling up Coffee. Uh, after the match, Joe and Mark try and beat Flash but are saved by Mark Andrews and Travis Banks. Uh, oh, <clears throat> never mind. Oop. <clears throat> All right, I believe I was at Denny Birch versus Sam Gredwell. Started off as a slugfest, crowd chanting, you look stupid at Sam Gredwell uh, because of his mohawk that he's got. That's a flat mohawk, which is never a good idea. Unless you're Chuck Liddell, who can beat up anyone who tells you otherwise. Uh, Gradwell nearly takes it with the Falcon Arrow. Uh, the crowd started chanting, oh, what was it? He's got a skid mark on his head. He's got a skid mark on his head. He's got a skid mark on his head. Jesus Christ, UK crowd, you guys are amazing. Uh, we got Danny Birch wins it with the right hand and a, just like a, what was a hanging DDT from the top rope. And then after that, Danny Birch challenges Pete Dunn right after the match. Uh, so we'll find out what happens with that. Match number four, the main event of the first episode of two. Uh, we had Noam Dar versus Zach Gibson, and holy shit, was this a match. Um... It was fantastic to watch. Uh, but yeah, Noam Dar started off, you know, overly confident, but controls the first half of the match. Uh, Dar works Gibson's leg, and Zach Gibson tries to turn it around by getting hold of arm, uh, arms Dar, Dar's arm, and not letting go. Uh, but as the match continued, Dar continues to abuse Gibson's leg. Uh, Gibson gets back into taking the offensive with some strikes and, sub and submissions. After a long exchange, Gibson power bombs Noam Dar into the ramp, nearly ringing out uh, Noam Dar. He managed to get back in at the count of nine. Uh, Dar manages to break the Shankly gates not once, but twice. He misses the Nova Rolla, chops down Gibson, double stomps the work knee. Uh, Dar gets Gibson into a brutal knee bar. Gibson f somehow manages to fight his way out, hits him with a helter skelter, and gets the pin. Um, that is a brief outline of what happened in this awesome match. I'm going to be combining the NXT UK, uh, both episodes into one grade because it's easier for me and I have trick-or-treaters that keep interrupting. Uh, so yeah, let's get to the second part of NXT UK. Match number one of that one is Mustache Mountain versus Sam Gradwell and Saxon Huxley. Uh, we got more Wildcat Jesus chants at Huxley. And more Skidwell chants at Gradwell. Uh, after a struggle, Trenton tags in Tyler Bate, who goes in on a fast offensive with much energy. Such strong boy. Uh, it was a brief tag team match. I mean, it was 10 minutes long, but it was brief for a tag team match. With Mustache Mountain standing Victoria, victorious. And although Huxley and Gradwell fought well, I think they fought much better separately than together. They don't complement each other. Um, and so the sum of their parts is less, or 
the group is less than the sum of their parts. I, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, phrase. I, I think they might be better off as singles. Uh, after that, we got a quick cut to Travis Banks having been attacked, which puts the main event in jeopardy. After the break, we find out that Mandrys has approached Johnny Singh, and he is going to insert himself into the main event. Uh, but then we move on to the second match, which is Isla Dawn versus Nina Samuels. The match started slow, uh, with Nina controlling most of the match, which there were points where Isla started to get some offense in, but as the match continued, Isla got more and more offense in. Um, Aladon got the win, however, after a solid kick and a suplex. And then we got an interview with Pete Dunne about Danny Burch's challenge. Um, we had Jordan Devlin versus Tucker. This one was a good match as well. It was definitely a debut match to highlight what Devlin is capable of, at least in terms of NXT UK. I actually haven't watched the NXT UK, champ or, uh, UK tournaments yet. Uh, but yeah, and although Tucker got some offense in late in the match, it proved insufficient as Devlin took Tucker out, pinning him for the winning end. Yes. Uh, we had a promo from Danny Burch and kind of response to Pete Dunne. And then after all is said and done, we had our main event. And this one was Mark Andrews versus Wolfgang. It's tough and hard hitting with Mandrews and Wolfgang being an almost even match with Mandrews using speed and Wolfgang using power. Uh, the two primarily exchanged hit for hit, blow for blow, with Wolfgang appearing to take the win with the spear, but Mandrews kicked out at two. Uh, Wolfgang gets hit with a massive DDT, but smartly rolls out of the ring, and in one part, uh, right at the end, Wolfgang gets hit with the stun dog millionaire and a shooting star press, and Mandrews pins him for the winsome. After the match was over, uh, Andrews and Wolfgang shook hands, and things were looking like they were going to be all hunky-dory between the two of them. As he was heading up to the top of the ramp, the Coffee Brothers run by and go to attack Mandrews. Uh, Mandrews is then saved by, uh, what was it? It was Flash and... Shit, I don't remember. Who was it? Anyway, uh, I, I actually can't remember for the life of me. It's Flash. No, it was, there was no one else. It was just Flash. I'm sorry, it's, it's late and I'm tired. So, uh, with that, uh, Wolfgang is looking at the two of them and he goes, runs into the ring. And the Coffee Brothers, thinking that they're outnumbered, roll out of the ring to avoid getting hurt. And Wolfgang immediately starts attacking Flash. And the Kofi brothers seeing what's going on, they're like, you know, maybe he can be on our side. And then they pick up Mandrews and say, prove yourself! And yeah, Wolfgang takes out Mandrews as well, and has gone heel to join with the Kofi brothers. Seems like a bit of an overpowered uh, meat fest, but we'll see where that goes. Uh, both NXT UKs, separately even, um, I would say both get a B plus, so I'm going to give both of them a B plus. You had excellent main events, um, debuts, they're still building up the roster and the storylines behind the roster, so it's going to be a little bit before we see more cohesive storylines built, but for now, NXT UK is doing great. If you're not investing the time to watch it, you should. Uh, but yeah, pulls up there, feel free to grade it along with me. But yeah, that has been all of the reviews, four hours worth. Um, this has been Real Honesty without John Ritland. I am not John Ritland, I am the Durbinator, and you have a great night. Thank you.